Today, we're learning English with Uncharted, the movie adaption of the mega popular video game series by Naughty Dog. Tom Holland stars in this film alongside Mark Wahlberg and Antonio Banderas. Nathan Drake, played by Tom Holland, travels the world in search of gold and treasure. Mark Wahlberg plays Sully, Nathan's friend and mentor. In this lesson, we'll be looking at a clip from the movie trailer as well as an interview with both Tom and Mark. But before we get started, every week we release lessons like this to help intermediate and advanced learners like you improve your English in a fun and dynamic way without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without needing subtitles. So if you're new here, make sure you join our community of over 5 million learners by hitting the subscribe button and the bell down below. Hey kid, I'm a little young for a bartender, aren't you? A little old for prom, aren't you? Everything in here. Why the map? It's the biggest treasure that's never been found. Five billion easy. But it's just a story. I beg to differ. Five hundred years ago, my family found the world's biggest fortune, then was betrayed. People have been searching for it all in vain. Both of you turn your keys clockwise at the same time. Ah! Thanks a lot. You almost got me killed. Clockwise, Sully! Well, it was 50-50, so I made a guess. Clearly. But the voyage was not just about gold. It was something much more valuable. This girl has a very tragic history. So much blood. I'm pretty sure he just threatened to kill me. Oh, this is gonna suck! <laughs> Hey kid, I'm a little young for a bartender, aren't you? Notice how Mark Wahlberg's character Sully pronounces the question tag, aren't you? The word you is reduced to a schwa sound, a. Uh. Then the letter T in aren't is pronounced as a ch sound, so we hear aren't ya. Listen again. I'm a little young for a bartender, aren't you? I'm a little young for a bartender, aren't you? A little old for prom, aren't you? Prom is the name given in the US to refer to the formal dance or party that students have at the end of the academic year, usually in their senior year. I know like in four days, I'm sure uh, if the, you know, prom's like in four oh days. Oh my god, you're not asking me to prom, are you? <laughs> Notice how Tom Holland's character Nathan pronounces the question tag aren't you? Instead of reducing the U to a schwa sound, he pronounces it U. However, he cuts out the T in aren't, so we hear aren't you? Listen again. A little old for prom, aren't you? It's interesting to see how the two of them pronounce this question tag differently, isn't it? Let's hear the whole segment one last time. Hey kid, I'm a little young for a bartender, aren't you? A little old for prom, aren't you? But it's just a story. I beg to differ. You can use the phrase, I beg to differ, when you want to politely disagree with someone. This is an emphatic phrase, so even though it's generally polite, it could sound a bit unfriendly depending on the situation and how the person says it. <laughs> Look, she's a grown woman, and your dad's been gone a long time. Maybe this is none of your business. I beg to differ. I used to live in those genitals. <laughs> now, if someone wants to move into my old room, I should at least get a vote. 500 years ago, my family found the world's biggest fortune, then was betrayed. If you betray someone, you break that person's trust. 
For example, imagine two people who have been best friends for a long time until one of them betrays the other by intentionally doing something to hurt the other person. I stopped you from drinking his wine. Because you knew it was poisoned. I suspected. You betrayed me. From the first. Forgive me. I never met. Please, God, easy. Forget. You sold my secrets. Both of you turn your keys clockwise at the same time. To turn something clockwise means to turn it in the same direction the hands on a clock move. A clock usually has three hands. The hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. All of them move in the same direction, clockwise. If something moves in the opposite direction, we say anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. The thread from the bit that drills through the lock, clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise? That's right. Drill bits rotate clockwise. Thanks a lot. You almost got me killed. Clockwise, Sully! Well, it was 50-50, so I made a guess. Clearly. When Sully says it was 50-50, he means he didn't know what was going to happen after turning the clock clockwise. So there was a 50% chance that things would work out and a 50% chance that things would not work out. It was 50-50. Henry, are you all right? What happened? I have an aneurysm. Requires emergency surgery. Doctors give me a 50-50 chance, so if there's anything you need to say to me, you should do it now. But the voyage was not just about gold. It was something much more valuable. Voyage is a French word that means a long trip especially one taken by ship. Welcome the hunter home from the hill. How are you both? Worn out. The train from Southampton was almost as bad as the voyage from Bombay. You must lie down before you change. I'm pretty sure he just threatened to kill me. When you say, I'm pretty sure, you mean that you're sure about what you're saying, you're not sure about what you're saying, you're sure about what you're saying, but you don't want to sound so direct. We say I'm pretty sure to give off the idea that while we are certain about what we are saying, we don't want to sound too confident about it. The word pretty decreases the intensity of the phrase. So instead of saying, I'm sure, which is more direct, we say, I'm pretty sure. You're cute, you're funny. Maybe you're getting hit on and you don't even know it. Really? Yep, pretty sure. Oh, this is gonna suck! We say that something sucks when we refer to something that is of bad quality or not good. It can also mean that a situation is not pleasant or doesn't happen the way we want it to, which is the meaning this word has in this scene. Can you leave me some wiggle room so I can check my phone periodically? Why? Waiting for your mom to text? No, actually, I'm waiting for a girl who broke up with me to text. That's way worse. Yeah, it's bad. This sucks. When learning a language, it can be a huge challenge to figure out which words and expressions are important and which ones you will never need. Without the guidance of a good teacher, you may waste a lot of time learning the wrong ones. But not to worry, because in our Fluent with Friends course, you will learn the words and expressions that native speakers use every day. Plus, you'll have tons of fun doing it with the TV series Friends, which various academic studies have shown is the best show to learn English. In this course, you will also learn how to reduce, cut and connect sounds, which is the secret to understanding us no matter how fast we speak. On top of all of that, you will also get to laugh at all of the jokes. You can give it a try now for free with our three-part masterclass. So what are you waiting for? Simply click up here or down in the description box below to sign up now. Um, Mark, any injuries for you? There were so many fight scenes. Tell me about them. 
You know the biggest injury I had was the sore back from sitting on my ass the whole time watching Tom run around like a crazy person. <laughs> Uh, no, I was luckily enough for me, I, I, I made the movie while I had uh, a couple of injuries, but no, I was, I was lucky enough to let Tom do a lot of the heavy lifting. So other than that, you know, it was, it was easy. That's definitely a question for Tom. Tom, seriously though, you were kicking ass. Like you had to have gotten like some bruises. What was it training and executing those? What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I got bangs and bruises here and there. I, I did quite a, a gnarly, like, jump over a, a railing in, in Barcelona where I slid down this roof and my whole right side was, like, black and blue. Uh, but other than that, nothing too serious. I mean, I was I was walking away from everything, so, so I was actually fine. You're Spider-Man. You can take it. Um, Mark... Any injuries for you? When you physically hurt yourself, you have an injury. The plural form of injury is injuries. Look, this morning, Pimento was screaming about someone trying to kill him. Has he said anything like that to you? He has, but I've seen him every day for weeks and I haven't noticed any new injuries, but the medication he's on may be making him paranoid. You know, the biggest injury I had was the sore back from sitting on my ass the whole time watching Tom run around like a crazy person. <laughs> when you feel sore, you feel slight pain in your body or in a specific area of your body. For example, it's common for you to feel sore when you start going to the gym. Or I can tell him, because you're about to kill me, Jay. My legs, my arms, my back, everything is sore. Well, I wore you out, huh? I don't know, don't get cocky, old man. When I sit down, I can still get up. Hey. When Mark says, sitting on my ass, he means he didn't have to shoot a lot of physical scenes or make a lot of physical effort while making the film. The phrase to sit on one's ass gives the idea that a person is lazy, sedentary, and doesn't do a lot. Keep in mind that this is an informal phrase. He could be anything he wants to be. He could be like um, this guy I know in high school. His grandfather invented these little ties that go on the end of salamis. He made millions of dollars. He's sitting on his ass. Have you communicated any of this to your son? Uh, no, I was luckily enough for me. I, I, I made the movie while I had uh, a couple of injuries. Notice how Mark says a couple of injuries. The article, uh, is pronounced very quickly as a schwa sound, uh. Even though we have an E at the end of the word couple, it is not pronounced. So in reality, the final sound we hear from the word couple is the L sound, which then connects with the word of right after, couple of. Putting it all together, we have a couple of injuries. Listen again. Uh, no, I was luckily enough for me, I, I, I made the movie while I had uh, a couple of injuries, but no, I was, I was lucky enough to let Tom do a lot of the heavy lifting. Again, notice the pronunciation of a lot of. We have two schwa sounds here. First, the article a uh, sounds like a. Uh. Then, the preposition of is reduced to a, uh, the schwa. So what we finally hear is a lot of. Listen again. But no, I was, I was lucky enough to let Tom do a lot of the heavy lifting. Vehicles that can pick up and transport heavy loads are called heavy lifts. Heavy lifting is also used in the context of muscle building and working out. When Mark says that Tom did a lot of heavy lifting in the film, he means that Tom did a lot of difficult and dangerous scenes. To let someone do a lot of heavy lifting is an expression that means to let someone do most of the hard work. Nice save. Could not have scripted it better myself. Thanks. Uh, but Barry did most of the heavy lifting. PA. Yes, bravo, boys. Tom, seriously though, you were kicking ass. To kick ass means to do something extremely well, or as it is being used here, to be able to fight well. Keep in mind that this is a very informal phrase. Why don't I let you talk me into this? This goes against everything I stand for. It's like extra gym class for no reason. Let's just give it a chance. You saw the fight. You all kicked ass. Listen to the following extract and fill in the blank. You had to have... Like some bruises. Like you had to have gotten like some bruises. We have another phrase being spoken with elements of connected speech here. You had to have gotten. 
First, the D in had is pronounced as a stop consonant, which then immediately connects with to. The word to gets reduced to ta, so we hear you had to. Now the next word is really interesting, gotten. There's a very specific way that we natives pronounce words like this one. Even though other English-speaking countries also use the sound, this is particularly common in American English. Check it out. Take a look at these words. Gotten, important, curtain. Notice that these words have something in common. The T plus vowel plus N combination at the end. Let's take the word gotten. When we say the letter T, our tongue goes up and down. It touches the roof of your mouth and then comes back down. T, T, T. So instead of pronouncing the T sound as a T, you will pronounce it as a stop T, which is an abrupt stop in the airflow. So instead of saying got, you will say ga, ga. So once your tongue is up for the stop T, you will then make an N sound through your nose or a N. So this becomes gotten, gotten. So in this clip, we hear the interviewer say gotten, gotten. Like you had to have gotten like some bruises. Notice the sound is the same in these words. Gotten, important, curtain. It doesn't really matter whether you have one or two vowels between T and N. We usually cut them out. Like you had to have gotten like some bruise. A bruise is an injury that usually appears in a discolored area of the body caused by a blow or impact. Yeah, I mean, I got bangs and bruises here and there. The word bang has many meanings, but in this context, it means an injury that is caused by hitting a part of your body against something by accident. Another common phrase is to get bumps and bruises. Gary, you took these boys on an unauthorized field trip and look what happened. He got some bumps and bruises and a thistle in his britches. What is the big deal? The big deal is I'm going to sue you. Yeah, I mean, I got bangs and bruises here and there. In the interview, Tom doesn't want to get into detail as to where on his body the bruises were. So he simply says, I got bangs and bruises here and there. You can use the phrase here and there when you don't want to be specific about something you're saying. Reminds me of Lucy. It was her favorite, right? Have you heard from her? Here, uh, here and there. Well, tell her hi for me next time. I, I did quite a, a gnarly, like, jump over a, a railing in, in Barcelona where I slid down this roof and my whole right side was, like, black and blue. In American slang, gnarly is used to refer to something extreme, dangerous, and exciting. Uh, pretty bad in the fourth fracture, number three. I saw that. Should have seen the intake. It was gnarly. How gnarly? Uh, about eight, nine. Nice. Railing is a fence made from a series of metal posts. Slid is the past tense of the verb slide. To slide means to move easily and without interruption over a surface. In the interview, Tom is saying that he slid down a roof. Uh, but other than that, nothing too serious. Other than that could be rephrased to aside from that or apart from that. Okay, so another thing about oatmeal cookies. Who even wants them? I mean, I've seen... Toby eat one like once, but other than that, pfft, like, forget it. You're Spider-Man, you can take it. <laughs> you can say to someone, you can take it, when you want to say that he or she is physically strong enough to do something dangerous or difficult. This phrase could also be used figuratively to mean that someone is able to deal with a difficult situation. I want to split your accounts between you and Sanjay. The medication isn't working anymore. I don't want to do this to you. I can take it. Hey, kid. A little young for a bartender, aren't you? A little old for prom, aren't you? Everything in here. Why the map? It's the biggest treasure that's never been found. Five billion, easy. But it's just a story. I beg to differ. We use the phrase, I beg to differ, to agree with someone, start a discussion with someone, disagree with someone.
You know, the biggest injury I had was the sore back from sitting on my ass the whole time watching Tom run around like a crazy person. <laughs> uh, no, I was luckily enough for me, I, I, I made the movie while I had uh, in, a couple of injuries, but no, I was, I was lucky enough to let Tom do a lot of the heavy lifting. So other than that, you know, it was, it was easy. That's definitely a question for Tom. In this context, to do the heavy lifting means to do the most difficult and dangerous scenes, to do many scenes in a row, to do scenes with a lot of dialogue. Seriously though, you were kicking ass. Like you had to have gotten like some bruises. What was it training and executing those? What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I got bangs and bruises here and there. I, I did quite a, a gnarly like jump over a, a railing in, in Barcelona where I slid down this roof and my whole right side was like black and blue. Uh, but other than that, nothing too serious. I mean, I was, I was walking away from everything, so, so I was actually fine. You're Spider-Man, you can take it. In American slang, something gnarly is easy, relaxed and fun, extreme, dangerous and exciting, boring, traditional and square. Many learners think that natives speak too fast. And because of this, they think that they will never be able to understand fast English. Have you ever felt like that? Well, then check out this lesson where you'll learn five tips to understand fast English. Let's check out a clip from that. Because natives have the habit of linking and reducing sounds. So it's important that you learn about connected speech. Let me give you an example. But then we had to talk to him at eight o'clock. But then we had to talk to him at eight o'clock. Notice that I'm speaking both ways at the same pace, not too fast, not too slow, but they still sound different, right? Why? Because in the second form, I'm using connected speech. So let's analyze the connected speech in this sentence. When you have a word that ends in T or D and the next word starts with a consonant, we normally cut out the final T or D. 